Welcome to The Open Word, an online ministry of Boone Open Bible Church. Hey everybody, Pastor Phil here. I'm pleased to introduce my dad as he brings us Gospel Illustrations with Doug. And now, here's Dad. It is another day and uh, we're privileged to come and give you another little message from the Gospel. And uh, I want to talk about something that we all have to deal with. facts kind of reminds me of the guy that said don't don't bother me with my facts I've already made my mind up and there are people that do that you know that such that thing that always strikes me as a little humor that they do that and but when I was young they used to say there's only two things certain for life taxes and death and that's proven out to be pretty true uh, but there are some other things uh, we could talk about and uh, this is always fun to deal with with kids. How much is five plus five? Somebody might say, well, let's see, that's probably 12. But it wouldn't matter how many times you go through this. I've even thought, you know, if you give a child 10 pennies and put them apart and have them count this one and then count that one and then count them all together, they'd have to say, it's 10. No other choice, but that's got to be 10. We could, we could do any one of number of occasions similar to that that would be trying to prove a point, but you can't mess with facts. Fact is, when you think about it, God put everything in order. Uh, how do you know it's morning? Because daylight starts showing up. Well, where does it show up? Over to the west, the north, or the south? Always to the east. And when it gets toward evening, the sunlight is always to the west. And those are just facts you can't argue with. And so the thing we're gonna deal with today is, if I can remember what I've got going here. Got to get a little more paint on my brush here. Facts are stubborn. You can't win when you argue against absolute facts. And so we're going to say today that facts are stubborn things. Did I get it? At least most of it. Facts are stubborn things. You can't argue against facts. And, and that's the way so many great strides are made. People begin to realize that, in fact, that I could share one with you that, that we've had to back down a little bit on. And they always used to say, whatever goes up must come down. Well, these days they've got it where they go outside of this orbit here so that we don't, they don't always come back down. But generally anything I throw comes back down. So we're going to talk about that kind of fact, all right? And we could deal with a lot of other fun stuff here, but let's get on with one of the, one of the main facts that I wanted to share with you today. Is a very important thing everybody needs to know. Facts are stubborn things, and here's one of those stubborn facts you can't get rid of, is God loves. Who do you suppose he loves? That's the big question. God loves you. How can you get away from that? The Bible is full, just filled with that kind of message that God loves you. And of course, um, we've got a different, I don't know how to describe it, but we've got a different idea of love now because people love their house, they love their dog, they love their cat or any of their pets, they love them. But that's a different kind of love, all right? But the kind of love that really counts is the kind that never goes away. Uh, might embarrass some of you to say, how many of you when you were dating told somebody you loved them and, you really didn't. You found out what love was like later when you met the one you married. And so we're talking about the kind of love that is never gives up. I kind of like that, don't you? That God never gives up on us love. For, for who? Us. And, and that is in spite of a major problem. God designed this world the way it should be. But the thing is with mankind, he let us have a choice and mankind chose sin. 
And all sin is, we try to, we can describe it a long way, but really what sin is, if you disobey God, that's a pretty simple statement to tell you what it is. Sin is simply disobeying God. And uh, when we talk about that, we have to ask the question, uh, does everybody sin? Well, basically the scripture says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We haven't lived up to what that is. But there is one thing about this kind of love from God. Sin has to be dealt with because you know the Bible says all have sinned. It also says the wages of sin is death. That would be a terrible place to live it, leave it, but that's just the facts of the matter. The wages of sin is death. And the only way for sin to be forgiven is death. And it can't be just any death. It can't be a dog or a cat or a, an animal. It's got to be pure, innocent blood. And there's only one person that came into this world as a man and never ever sinned, has always remained perfect before God, and you know who that is. That is Christ. We call him Jesus all the time, and I do need to point out sometimes that uh, Christ is not his name, really, it's his title. Because he's Jesus the Lord. See, it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So it's things like that that we have to keep in mind that, that, that Christ was, the, in the Old Testament, they called him Messiah. Or we call him Savior, we call him Lord. And here in America, I'm afraid we don't understand Lord very much. Because if you're living uh, in a place where the Lord, the landlord, or you, you were under somebody else's care, well, that's a different story. But Jesus is Lord. He was God in the flesh, came to this earth, earth with a real purpose. And Christ, even though he came in, in, in flesh as God, he died. Why did he die? There's a reason he died. Who did he die for? He was not guilty of sin. He didn't deserve to die, did he? No, Jesus didn't deserve to die, but he died for a reason. And we can talk a lot about what all they did to Jesus, but the important thing is Jesus did die on that cross and it's to prove God's love for us. And I'm so thankful that God loves us. I'd hate to serve a God who is an angry God all the time, looking for ways to destroy people. Think about it, when you disobey God, now with my dad, I could get away with a little bit, but not much. To my dad, one of the worst things you could do is tell a lie. And so there was always a punishment involved when we did things like that. So you see, God has a right, don't he, as the creator? Don't God have a right to judge as he pleases? I think so. And God could easily, because he says the penalty, he even told Adam, he said, when you eat from that tree, you'll die. And because Adam disobeyed God, death came on this world. And so it's a terrible thing. And then God said, yes, there is punishment involved. And we don't even like to talk about that. But if you don't trust the Lord Jesus, if you don't give your life to him and ask him to save you, because we're all guilty of sin. And how many of you, uh, well, I've never got into New Year's, what do they call it, resolutions? You're, I'm going to do this this year. How many of you make it? How many of you make it all year by not doing that? Well, how many of you could say, I tried not to lie, but guess what? It's as simple. We, we find it so easy to sin and just think, well, I'll try harder next time, but we never have the success of doing that. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. We have not got the capacity because we're born in the flesh and because we've been born in the flesh, we do fleshly things. And the Bible speaks out against those fleshly things that we ought not to do them. And then he said, the wages of sin is death. That means to be eternally separated from God. And if you don't go to heaven to be with God, guess where you end up? This is according to the word of God. God placed, made a place 
for Satan and his crowd. And if you don't go be with God and serve him and go with him, you get to go to that place that God prepared just for the devil and his crowd. So you may ask the question, well, what can I do? I want to change. I don't want to go to the lake of fire. I want, I want to go be with God. And the stubborn fact is God dictates how we have to do that. It isn't up to you and I to decide, well, I'll be really good and, or I'll go to church a lot. I'll give money or something. No, God's stubborn fact is the wages of sin is death. And there's only way to get around that is to realize that Christ has already paid the price for our sin. Now, in order to us to, for us to take advantage of that, you have to do what the Bible says. And the first thing it says is there's something we must do. And I hear people say, you can't do anything to get saved. Yes, you can. You've got to follow the scripture way. And here's what he said we must do. Oops, I got that wrong, didn't I? This is where it's supposed to be here. Hope I don't confuse you too much by that. I'll try to correct a little bit. The first thing he said we do is we have to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, that he came into this world to save us from our sin. He never ever sinned. He did not deserve death. He did not deserve that kind of punishment. He gave his life for us. And the reason is, God loves you. He loves you enough that he sent his only begotten Son into this world for the very express purpose to save us from our sin. So we don't have to sin. We can go and ask God to forgive us. He can forgive us because Christ already died for us. Now there, is a, there are other conditions involved here because guess what? Even the devil believes Jesus is God's son. You suppose that's gonna take him to heaven? Not hardly, because there's things we must do. And here's one of those things. And that is to repent. And really, we, we've tried to, I hear people say, well, I'm sorry for my sin, and yes, we should be, but you gotta do more than be sorry. <laughs> Get the idea? Repent means a change of mind that leads to change of action. So what we want to do is we want to avoid sin. And like I said, we can't stop that by ourselves. But there, if, we'll, if we'll repent and ask the Lord to help us, He sent His Holy Spirit with us for that express purpose. Now, all these things we've shared with you, but then there's one other thing you've got to do. You could believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can repent and call on the Lord and, and all that kind of stuff. But there is another thing. The Bible said, he came unto his own. That was the Jewish community. I misspelled that baby, but anyway, you get the idea of what the message is supposed to be. You must receive that gift. It's a gift. See, the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't know about you, but I could get excited about that, that someone loved me when I was unlovable. Someone could care for me when I didn't care for myself. You see, God loves us that much that from heaven, he sent his own son into this world to save you and I from this thing called sin, which always brings eternal death. The only way out is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, repent from our sin, and receive him into our lives. You do that simply by prayer. You could say, I, I really do believe Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross for my sin. Well, that's good. That's a good starting place. And I, I'd like to live like he wants me to live. That would be to repent. So then you start asking God to help you. Then you open your heart up and say, Lord Jesus. Remember that word, Lord, Master? That's a fact now. I invite you to come into my heart and my life and help me to live for you. It's, that's it. He's already done the big thing, hasn't he? And the little thing is for us to make a decision. What are we going to do about it? If you've never given your life to Christ, never asked Him to save you, never believed on Him, there's still time. And I think now's a good time. Just that simple little prayer, 
being willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, asking him to save you, he'll do it. He did it for me almost 62 years ago now. So uh, think on these things and may God do a work in your lives, I pray. Amen.